Hey, Sagana Girl here. I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you a little bit about the Halloween Oracle. I've had this uh, Oracle for about a month now and I've been trying to contain my excitement. I didn't want to start reading with it until October. I'm pairing it with my Ludi Lescott Tarot, so I'm using these two decks together. Um, <clears throat> solely these two decks for the month of October. So I've been kind of cradling it in my bag and in, under my pillow and all that stuff because I've been so excited to use it, but I was really trying to wait until October before I opened the deck, and so now it's October. Now normally I don't do a review so early, it's only October 4th, so I really only have been using it uh, for about four days. I've been looking at the art and I've been reading the guidebook, but I haven't actually been using it for readings uh, except for the last four days. So it's pretty early on, but I also know that it is. this is a very uh, seasonal themed deck, so obviously very much around October and Halloween. So I thought I better uh, get a, a, some sort of review out there for people in case you were wanting to see a few more um, pieces of, a few more cards with regards to the artwork, and I can give you some of my early on impressions. So I have to admit, I was a bit hesitant ordering the deck just because it was so heavily Halloween themed. Now, I love Halloween, uh, the trick-or-treating, the candy, I love dressing up, that's all good. But I'm also finding that I'm uh, not, a, not a practicing pagan. Um, I come from a very Christian background, but I have been moving more towards the pagan side of spirituality over the last few years. And so I'm very interested in the celebration um, of the Sabbaths and um, so for this Sabbath for Samhain that's coming up, Halloween, um, I thought you know this would be a good time to to use these cards but again I was hesitant because I thought that they might be too heavily too heavily Halloween themed and I was unsure about whether or not I would read with them throughout the rest of the year and I am not very uh, deep into the pagan celebrations or the Wiccan celebrations so it wasn't something that was calling to me from a ritual or spiritual place but I did like the artwork I found the, 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 the few cards that I've seen online were beautiful and I am starting to explore a little bit more into that type of spirituality. So uh, if I um, pronounce things incorrectly or if I get the terminology confused, please forgive me. I am still uh, trying to sort my way through all of that. And uh, I am, I guess, a solitary practitioner of some sort in that I, there, aren't, there isn't really a group of other pagans or Wiccans that I'm connected with and, and I don't know if I'm ready to put that label on myself yet so anyways it's all very new to me and I humbly um, ask for your apologies if I offend anyone out there in either of those communities so back to the deck review so I'll start with the box uh, it's by Blue Angel Publishing so it, the traditional Blue Angel box, really, really sturdy. Of course, it's orange inside, beautiful pumpkin orange color. It's nice and sturdy. It's got these little reflective black symbols of the more contemporary symbols of Halloween. The deck is by Stacey DeMarco, and she's teamed, teamed up again with Jimmy Manton, who also did the artwork on the her decks, the Goddesses and Sirens and the God and Titans. So I was pretty excited to see that because I love that deck. I love the artwork in that deck, okay? So on the box it says, lifting the veil between the worlds every night. And so when I saw that, I thought, mm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use these every night because they are so heavily Halloween themed. But I do have to say I've been pleasantly surprised with regards to that. So I will get to that in a second, okay? But just so that you know, nice sturdy box. I ordered my deck from Amazon.ca. I paid... I want to say $17. I know it was under $20 Canadian, so very, very reasonable. Okay, it does come with a, a bigger white book. It's a little bit thinner than what 
you would see in some of our other decks. There are, are only 36 cards in this deck, so it, it seems like a small deck, uh, but that didn't really bother me. The artwork is beautiful, which we're going to get to in a second, so I'd rather have quality artwork than a quantity of cards that I don't know what to do with. So anyways, you've got a decent sized book and you get about a page to two pages for each for each card, so it shows you a black and white picture of the card in the corner. It has a little rhyme, poem. Um, each of the cards has a keyword, and then it talks about the card. It talks about the card in our con in a more contemporary way with regards to um, ideas around, for example, invisibility and feeling like you're invisible or wishing you could be invisible or um, missing things because it seemed like it was invisible but then it goes into more of a esoteric or um, yeah I guess esoteric is the only way I can put esoteric explanation of what invisibility is and how that relates to the keyword which in this case would be authenticity okay so it's about a page it has about a page and a little bit okay um, very short and concise not really deep, deep pages and pages and pages of history or background, but I'm okay with that because I think that sometimes we can get so caught up in the the author's description of what the card means and sometimes for myself I feel like I lose my own intuitive feeling around the card. So I was very pleased that the information in the booklet is succinct, it's very spot on, it's very easy to understand, and it gives, it allows for a lot of room for personal interpretation, okay? The guidebook is 73 pages long, okay? And then the, the last few pages of the book just talks about Stacy DeMarco, and then some of the other decks that are available from Blue Angel, okay? Handy little book, sits nicely in the box, okay? Now, um, I will say that I haven't used the book very much. I did um, start reading it and then I stopped because I got sidetracked with some of the other work that I was doing with my other decks. But I found that that hasn't affected my ability to work with cards. I've been finding for the last month or so that I'm connecting much more intuitively to my decks and I think it's just a process of me allowing the information to come and just trying to be open and relaxing and being in the moment with my deck which I thought I was doing previous to the last six to eight weeks but now suddenly I find that I'm connecting even more so apparently there's layers right every layer you get a little bit deeper which I think that um, logically I understood that but intuitively I wasn't getting it and so now finally I'm getting it so the cards are a nice size. They're standard blue angel. Okay, so they're they're nice and they're nice big cards. They've got a little bit of a trim, uh, a border around the edge, but I don't find that that detracts at all from the cards. Of course, I would love a deck like this to have no border. I think that would be stunning. But I find that I'm okay with with the border. Um, it, it has the name of the card on the bottom and then a couple keywords to help you with your intuition so to sort of jumpstart you and get you going. So I want to go and show you, go into a couple of the cards that are my favorites, okay? And you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about with regards to borders. So here is the Joy card. Beautiful. So you can see how it's got uh, the word on the bottom and I can't read this backwards but Anyways, you can see it, it's got a bit of a descriptor. Lady de los Muerto, Muertos, sorry. Again, beautiful, the artwork is gorgeous. Spider, community, web weaving. A nice combination of uh, symbolism, people, an uh, animals, um, supernatural beings, of course, because it's a Halloween deck. Night song, just the art is it's gorgeous. There's so much going on in the foreground, in the background. It's nicely balanced. Um, it's they're not crazy busy, but there's good detail. So I don't get too distracted by 
everything else that's going on in the background, it all kind of fits nicely together. It's well supported. Eternal Love. This is one of my favorite cards, Hearth. I love this card, it's so beautiful. This is actually has inspired me to build a altar in my living room, well, in my kitchen, dedicated to Vesta and Hestia, the Keepers of the Flame. Um, and it's just, I'm really, I really, really enjoy this card, really connect well to this card. The Cauldron is another beautiful card. I really enjoy the pentacle in the background. Again, simple but deep. Like you could spend some time gazing at this card and getting into the cauldron or thinking about what could be in the cauldron. Owl. The Veil. So beautiful. And then Winter, this is probably one of my favorite cards. This one came up in my um, daily draw a couple days ago that I posted on my Facebook page. Okay, so those are some of my favorite cards. You can see, again, a little bit of a border. I just want to pull a couple more uh, just to give you a different idea. So here's, there's a sense of play with this deck, so the Trick or Treat, mischievous play. You get a little bit of the Supernatural. There's the mummy card. Um, of course, you need to have a werewolf in there. It's part of the deal. Um, there's a zombie card, which is really cool. It's just a hand. Sorry, I've got to find it now. A hand coming out of a grave, which my kids really dig. They're all into the zombie apocalypse and all of that stuff. Okay, so there you can see beautifully done cards. A little bit of joy, a little bit of light, a little bit of darkness, a little bit of everything, okay? So, beautiful, beautiful art. Now, I do, I do want to address one issue. I've seen a couple comments on some of the different pages that I belong to with regards to that there's the idea that there's too many skulls. And she does use skulls. Five cards have skulls as prominent figures on them. Okay, and I'm going to show those to you. And the reason I'm going to show them to you is because a lot of people thought, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there were a few comments made that that's too many skulls in one deck. And I'm like, well, it's a Halloween oracle, and, you know, you think about the skull and the idea of stripping of stripping the layers away and coming back to, to the bare bones of things. So, I don't know. They work for me. They're beautifully done. They're not repetitive. Each skull has a, diff a very significantly different theme. I think this is one of my favorites. I really get a whole like Persephone kind of underworld feeling of that, obviously. Titled The Underworld. Okay. The Skull of Flowers would make a great tattoo. One of my friends actually commented she wanted to have that on her body. And then The Skull of Darkness. Okay, so yeah, there's five skulls, but you know what? It's a Halloween deck. Okay, that's kind of how it works. I love this deck. So um, I guess my, my biggest joyful thing that I've noticed is that I could totally read with this every day. I thought they were going to be too thematic for me. I thought they were going to be too Halloween-y, but I've been reading them with them daily and I am just loving them. So I could totally see myself using these consistently throughout the year. So if you're on the fence about whether this is too Halloween-y for you or whether it's too thematic, let me tell you, speak coming from me, honestly from my heart, I could totally use these every single day. I think they fit, they're so easy, it really triggers my intuition and I'm just really, really loving working with these cards. So hopefully this um, review was helpful. Uh, please think long and hard about this deck. I think you will enjoy it. I'm quite enjoying it. It's super easy to read, re but really rich in detail. So that's all I have to say for tonight. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day and blessed be.